Hello, this is Miguel Gomez with AIDS.gov. I'm at AIDS 2012 in Washington, D.C. with a colleague from NIH, Dr. Carl Dievenbach. We have two questions for Carl. First, we want to ask about a cure. Sir, a lot of times it's a complicated um, answer to when we at, when are asked, do we have a cure for HIV? Could you explain in simple terms, how do we talk about a cure? Uh, thanks for that question, Miguel. It, it's a really important question that we uh, create a sense of understanding and community about where we are on cure research and not overpromise. Uh, if we think of an analogy to other times in the AIDS epidemic, uh, particularly back to the mid 80s, where we, before we had um, the potent antiretrovirals we have today, we were in a time of discovery, understanding what the virus did, how the virus grew and then the, the key steps in the virus um, growth cycle so that we could target those. In some ways, that's exactly where we are today with cure research. We're trying to figure out how the virus stays latent or asleep mm -hmm. in the cells, how, the how to potentially wake that virus up and how to potentially to eliminate it. So in many ways, we are at the earliest days of discovery, trying to find agents that can do these things in a safe and durable way. But in, in that sense, um, um, because we are at the very beginning, I, I, on, on Sunday in the, one of the opening sessions, I said it's not that we have um, a glass that's half empty or half full, but for the first time we have a sense of what the glass is. And so if you think about that, that is, I want people to take that as a sobering fact, that we are really at the earliest days, and um, I think a cure is possible. I can't put a time frame on it, but at the end of the day, Research um, is an amazing engine that as the great minds that are in this country and around the world start thinking about, about this problem and start addressing it, um, new uh, important findings will come out and they will build toward um, a, a, a cure within, I would say, a reasonable time period. I can't put a time on it. Well, what I enjoy hearing is that we're moving in the right direction. We can't overpromise, but we're moving forward towards that AIDS free generation. I think we're, well, I, let me just correct one thing here. Oh, a, a cure is not a necessity to make an AIDS free generation. I think that that's something that we have Good to point. absolutely get across. An AIDS free generation um, will be when the number of new infections occurring are, are um, less than the number of people that we're putting on yes. treatment. And so we will, over, over a period of time of expanded treatment, bend the curve of new infections, and then over time there will be a decrease in the number of HIV infected people. We could have a cure that would at some point cure 10,000, 100,000 people. That is not going to make a dent in the AIDS epidemic. If we're going to have the kind of cure that can truly bring about the end of the AIDS epidemic, we're going to need a cure that is vaccine-like, that can be rolled out globally and treat 15, 20, 30 million people. So that is, I think it's, it's in that sense better to talk about a vaccine that can really help end the epidemic. But we have to really think um, that the, um, a cure is not necessarily part of the, of the conversation related to an the age uh, free generation. And thank you, because we do get excited, and that's one of the things when I said we don't want to overpromise. We don't want to overpromise. It is really, it is a tool to move us forward. Absolutely. I appreciate your time today. This is Miguel Gomez at AIDS 2012. We want to thank you for listening.